battle athlete. This is one of those things that I never knew I wanted until I saw it. I really like anime girls. And they also really like cars. So when I saw those two things put together, I was like, oh. Lewd anime waifus that transform into cars. It's so ridiculously genius, I wish I had thought of it. Guess you could say these waifus are more than meets the eye. Lewd transformers, <laughs> waifus in disguise. Also, thanks to Lanuigi for sending me this, man. I really appreciate it. The game has a total of five characters that you'll unlock as you play through story mode. You start the game with Lancier, and you'll also notice that every character is based on an existing car while not saying it's exactly that car. Like, Lancier is obviously based on a Lancer. Galaxia is clearly based on a Subaru Impreza. Seven is obviously an RX-7 FD. RR-35 is obviously based on the GTR R35. <laughs> Then there's Ragolith, and I'm not 100% sure which car Ragolith is based on. If you know, let me know in the comments. The story is told through visual novel style cutscenes, and the story is that there's some bug-like aliens that are invading, and you are just the exterminator that this city needs. The gameplay pretty much consists of basic hack and slash combat, with a few mechanics to keep it interesting. As you're attacking and killing bugs, it'll increase your combo gauge, which will put you up into different gears. Once you get up into 6th gear, you hit overdrive, increasing your attack and defense. This also gives you access to your overdrive special move, which does a shit ton of damage and hits a whole bunch of enemies all at once. There's also a yellow bar under your health bar that can be used for special attacks and using your secondary weapon that's a long range attack. It fills up as you're attacking and killing enemies the same way your gear gauge does. Now you can get through a majority of the game with just basic light 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 heavy attacks, but there's definitely potential for some crazy combos and juggles. These combos and juggles aren't easy to do though, so they do take some time and some skill to get down, but oh man, if you can do some of these combos, you look sick as hell. It's also worth noting that once you're character takes a certain amount of damage, their clothes will rip off, not unlike Sinran Kagura or Valkyrie Drive, giving you a much better view of her front and rear bumpers. Obviously the main selling point of this game is being able to transform into a car, and I'll be the first to admit the novelty of this is pretty much what carries the whole game. Being able to drift around while attacking enemies is pretty satisfying. <laughs> But eventually you realize that while in car form, you're really not that effective at dealing damage, so you're better off switching into your combat mode. And you really just start using the car mode as a way to get around faster. But even then, they put landmines in the way, so if you're in a car mode, you'll run over landmines. You can boost through them, but sometimes there's so many, you still end up hitting landmines. It's almost like every area is a no fun zone, like they just don't even want you to use the car mode. They do make proper use of the car mode in special racing missions, but they're very few and far between. Between. I think there's only like three of them and each one of them takes place on the exact same track Which brings me to the game's greatest fault. There is little to no variety in this game's stages and levels There's like three racing missions Then there's two missions that take place in the city two missions that take place in an underground facility And then the rest of them all take place on a freeway at a slightly different time of day 90% of this game is done on the exact same level this in combination with not really utilizing the car mode as much really causes the game to feel extremely repetitive. There's also some really strong RPG elements. You'll find yourself grinding levels for better equipment. I guess you could call this a car PG. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Pretty good. The gear that you have equipped actually shows up as decals when you're in car mode, and it looks like tattoos or body stickers when you're in waifu mode. thought this was a really cool idea, and it looks pretty awesome. There are also items and upgrades that you can purchase in the shop, but they start to get really expensive, so you're going to have to really grind for those too. Luckily, after you finish all the single player content, which is about 30 plus missions, there's still multiplayer. Of course, this game being a Vita game, the multiplayer is completely dead. But luckily, you can still start it up in single player and still play these multiplayer missions. These missions are far better for grinding for equipment and decals. 
Unfortunately, after that, there's not really much else to this game. I'd like to blame this game's shortcomings on the fact that it's a Vita game and that's why it's really repetitive and lacks variety, but when Sinra and Kagura Shinobi Versus and Valkyrie Drive are also Vita games and not that repetitive, it's kinda hard to blame it on that. I don't want to make it sound like I didn't have fun with this game, cause I really did, but the fact that it's as repetitive and grindy as it is is still something I can't ignore. I'd love to see this game get a Steam PC port just so I could breathe some new life in the multiplayer or even a modern version with an open world where you can transform into a car and just drive around an open world that would be really sick but if the concept of a lewd transformers devastation appeals to you i would definitely check it out maybe just downshift your hype a little bit bouncing titties bouncing titties bouncing titties bouncing titties 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 Give me Tite! <laughs>